a worldwide deployable force. Fast boats with guns that can go into littoral areas. We can impact the bad guy in areas where he thought he was safe before. We're a lot of bang for the buck. This is no blue water Navy. These are brown water sailors. Their boats are fast, the crew focused, and ready to react in a split second. Their mission, to patrol and secure Iraq's waterways. These are the Navy Riverines. I like just the name. Not everyone can say they're a Riverine and uh, get to do the cool stuff that we get to do. Big guns, fast, fast boats. Uh, it's every kid's dream and we're living it. When we talk to people outside the command, they tell us how cool we are, but none of us are high-fiving each other, none of us think we're badasses. The Riverines are the Navy's answer to the global war on terror. Established in May 2006 under Navy Expeditionary Combat Command, the Riverines' current mission is to conduct maritime security operations along Iraqi waterways. The Riverine uh, force as a whole is critical to the, the overall success because of the fact that we are able to shut down the, the last line of communication over the insurgents we're using. Um, forces on land, air, and, and the water is what's going to win the fight. Senior Chief Petty Officer John Flanagan is part of Rivron 1, the first of the three Riverine squadrons to deploy. It's all dangerous. Um, the, the hours of patrols will depend on the mission, depending on what kind of mission pack you're running. Uh, sometimes they're 10 hours, sometimes they're 18 hours. Uh, we did things in the excess of 30 and 40 hours, depending on where we are at and what we were running. It's a grueling environment. It's, uh, it's hot, it's nasty. Uh, some of the people appreciate you, some of them don't. But we do the job and we, we enjoy it. A uh, cool factor is being able to be different from the Navy, from the normal Navy, to uh, go out and be your own kind of unit, and, an infantry and a boat unit at the same time. The boats they use are riverine patrol boats, uh, uh, high speed, low draft boats that use a variety of weapons. Since the initial stand-up, the Navy has relied heavily on the Marine Corps for infantry training and ongoing support. That's where uh, a lot of our tactics came from. When we initially stood up, the Marine Corps provided us with uh, a wealth of information and helped us get our guys trained up, uh, and uh, we took the mission over from them. Uh, and they were actually doing it in Iraq, so who better to learn from? When we first stood up, I can say as the XO, we really weren't certain yet of what we were all getting ourselves into. We were sort of, we weren't making it up as we were going, but kind of, sort of. I think the biggest challenge we faced was the different kinds of sailors that we had coming in. Uh, the Navy stood this up in a hurry, particularly Squadron 1. They were a little bit able to be a little bit more selective with Squadron 2 and 3, but with Squadron 1, they pretty much just started sending out orders and you know one day a guy thought he was uh, on a destroyer uh, and that was his life and the next day he got a set of orders that said report to Riverine Squadron 1 and that was how we filled up uh, initially. Today's Navy Riverine force is relatively new. Its resurgence marks the unit's first deployment since the Vietnam War. Our history is based on a group of sailors put together for Vietnam. Vietnam, the rivers were used as highways by the Viet Cong and by other people that you know, were transporting weapons and contraband. And the Navy put the river patrol force on the rivers to stop that. Basically the same thing that they're doing in Iraq right now. Larry Weatherall served as a Navy engineman in the late 60s as one of the game wardens, the original brown water sailors, who operated along the Mekong Delta in Vietnam. Our boats were a pleasure craft hull that was adapted for rivering warfare. They needed something fast, they needed something you know, easily repairable. And they took that hull and they added a, a modified superstructure and added guns to it and sent it to war. They put the jet pumps in it as opposed to propeller drives. But the boats that are out there now are, are designed for rivering warfare. 
They're, they're specifically designed for the mission. And they're faster, they're better armed, they have more armament, they carry a lot more people. Uh, the communications capability is much greater. It's just a whole different world. How good was the radar? Uh, it was good during clear weather, but during the monsoon, we would get so much scattered that at times we couldn't even see where we were with the radar turned on. Retired Captain Wes Wesolesky recalls his tour as a naval aviator or Sea Wolf helicopter pilot. But our mission was to come to the front, neutralize the enemy, because we could attack him from any angle, from behind, from a beam, and uh, take care of getting any of the uh, troops who were injured off the boats and off to a medical facility. My role with the game wardens was uh, their angel, if you will. We were the cavalry that came to the rescue when they would get into deep kimchi. We call them the Greybeards. They've been very helpful, very friendly. In the very beginning, they, they kind of helped guide us in what we needed to do to stand this force up. Um, and it was on some of their advice that some of the first things we needed to do was to take sailors from Blue Water Navy, destroyers, frigates, cruisers, aircraft carriers, and uh, turn them into expeditionary guys. They're the connection with, with our past, but they inspire us to, uh, to perform today. Uh, some of the tactics, of course, have changed. We, we have more modern equipment, more, more modern boats. But the heart of the Riverine, the thing that makes the Riverine special, the ability to overcome adversity, that mental toughness, that physical toughness, I mean, that's just how we do things. The Riverines maintain a close relationship with the game wardens of Vietnam, who served as consultants of sorts during the unit's stand-up. Name is Mike Quinn, who was the guy that was killed, uh, one of the guys that was killed on Devlin's boat. Uh, he and I traded boats, or I would have been on that boat. Extreme non-respect. Just the things, just the stories they've shared with us and that we've shared with them from uh, actually uh, deploying. Um, They've been through a lot, and uh, they, the tactics that they used, we still use some of them. I mean, they, they've got things down to perfect. So it's just, it's great to hear their stories and what they've done. The new Riverine uh, groups, uh, for us, you know, we feel like they're our kids, you know, and we just want to do everything that we possibly can for them, and perhaps we've been able to help them a little bit with some of the information on training. Um, but. You know, when we get out here with them, we all stand a little taller and we suck the belly in. You know, we're all about, you know, 20 or 30 years younger, you know, and, and we all want to sign back up. But, uh, you know, we know that's not going to happen. So it's great being with them. And, uh, we love what they're doing, picking up where we left off. These specialized sailors go through rigorous training to adapt to their role in the war in Iraq and the ongoing war on terror. We're a worldwide deployable force. I think we're going to be around for the foreseeable future. The guys who are doing this business want to be here. I got guys from the fleet knocking my doors down, trying to get here to do this fight. And I think we can impact the bad guy in areas where he thought he was safe before. Uh, the Riverine Force is an outstanding way to combat terrorism. Our skills, not only does it apply to Iraq, but throughout the world. Uh, to, as long as there's rivers, we'll be there.